I sat down with a promising young man who seems to be making waves in the political scene, just to find out what inspired him to get down and dirty with politics. Have a listen. In today's episode, we're going to be talking to a very young politician who's grown to become a powerhouse within the Canadian political scene. Nathan Chan is running for council or as a councillor for the Toronto City Council at Ward 42 in Scarborough. Welcome to the show, Nathan. Thank you for having me. Nathan, uh, you're obviously a very young person. Uh, you're probably, what, 30-something? 30 31. 31. Mm -hmm. At the age of 31, uh, you've accomplished a lot in terms of politics. You, you've been uh, a school board trustee, and you've also had uh, an exposure to provincial politics, and now you're back into municipal politics with, with a serious agenda and, and a goal. What really drove you to get enter, you know, enter into politics? I think we've been hearing from a lot of people that uh, they are interested in politics. Politics is my cup of tea. And what I've found is a lot of things that happen to me from you know, waking up in the morning to going to bed, a lot of things that are being done to me or that a lot of things that happen around me are being decided by politicians. And, and my thing was, my passion was, you know, how do we change some of the things that are unfair? How, how do we change some of the unjust stuff happening around okay. us? And if you don't get involved in politics, there's no point in complaining about it. And I think politics runs our life on a daily basis and uh, we cannot stay away from it. The more we stay away from it, the more chances are that others are making the decisions for us. And uh, I wanted to be part of making the decisions and that's why I chose politics as a way to advance social and economic justice uh, further. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a struggle because politics is, is a hard, you know, politics with a capital P is a hard thing to <laughs> survive in as a, as a racialized uh, member and as a young person. Uh, I was a newcomer to this country, wasn't born here. So all these challenges are there, but the more we get involved and more barriers we break, it paves way for other people. So that's that's a particular reason uh, that I got involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you're from, from an ethnic community. You're, you're a Tamil person running into politics, which was usually, or in, in the past, dominated by um, Caucasians. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the case anymore. There are a lot of eth ethnic politicians. But is, is there a hidden um, you know, reason why more people from minorities are entering into politics? I don't think it's a hidden reason. It's a natural progress uh, for communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I take uh, the Tamil community, you know, the initial uh, priority for people is to make sure that they have a shelter, they have a sustainable job, their children get educated and so on. And the next level is to try to get involved in the community and start giving back to the community. And then when they start giving back to the community, getting involved in the community, they start to see certain things that are not being done properly. And then, then naturally communities get involved in, in politics. We've seen that with the Italian community, Greek community and the Tamil community now is, is, is entering that particular field. So it, it's a natural progress in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of getting involved in politics. But we are severely underrepresented. When I say we, we are talking about racialized communities. For example, City of Toronto, we have close to half of the population that are um, racialized communities, and also many of them born outside Canada. But you have 44 councillors, and only four of them are considered uh, part of the racialized communities or visible minorities. So uh, the ratio is much slim. And, uh, and so underrepresentation of racialized communities under-representation of equity-seeking groups like, such as women, gay, <coughs> lesbian, LGBT communities, people with disabilities, is, is a serious issue. So I think, I think people from the community that are underrepresented have to step up, have to take up the challenge. Uh, it is going to be a battle, but they'll have to be prepared to fight, and that's what I'm planning to do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you entered politics, you became a school board trustee. Were you, were you planning on you know, taking the natural progression from school board trustee to council to municipal to provincial to federal or did you choose that because you wanted to accomplish something in that particular role? Well, I, I chose a school board trustee position uh, not thinking that you know, I'm going to keep going and do different things. I was a teacher mm -hmm. and I was a youth worker. So as a youth worker, uh, you start to see a lot of young people who get in trouble and they, uh, they are being forced to be out of school. We call it push out rather than drop out mm -hmm. because the system is trying to push young people out of the, out of, out of the schooling. So I, I thought I'll go and become a teacher so I'll have more time with young people rather than be a youth worker who is more on the reactive side, uh, intervention side. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me be in the preventive side. And I go to school, become a teacher, and I find that the school environment is not completely not conducive to helping young people. The curriculum is being pushed, the pressure on teachers, the system. 
And so I thought the next level would be, because I'm also educated in uh, education related. I did my Bachelor of Education and I'm doing my Master in Education. So those things related to my school board trustee role. So it was a natural fit for me to be part of the school board trustee. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as a, as a person who represents racialized communities, I think uh, we need to step up and take up challenging leadership roles to, to make the, pave, pave the way for the other generation. For example, there is currently no South Asians mm -hmm. in, the, in the city of Toronto as a counselor, mm -hmm. which makes it seem uh, you know, really underrepresented, right? So once we have somebody breaking through it, then more people will get involved. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you want to run as a counselor or you are running as a counselor and you hope to become the counselor and make a lot of changes. And I understand you're following the Gandhian philosophy of be the change you want to see. Mm -hmm. um, why not be a provincial uh, politician or a federal politician and still affect all of those changes? I think one of the difficulties with provincial or federal politics is that you actually have to tow a party line. Mm -hmm. um, you have to belong to a party and whatever the party leader says, you're carrying the message of that particular party and you, you can not be a complete individual on your own. And with municipal politics, it, it is possible for you to have, be an individual on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could have, the only track record you're defending is your track record. Only beliefs and philosophies, vision you're defending is your own belief, vision and philosophy. So it's much easier, um, you know, being tied to a party and when, you, you, when your party leader has done something that contradicts your vision, you cannot do anything but to defend that, right? So it's very restrictive in one sense, but at the same time, racialized community members and marginalized community members often need to find a way into municipal politics as well, uh, which is we are more underrepresented uh, in municipal politics sometimes than the, than the provincial and the federal ones too, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it is the closest to people. A lot of people do not realize everything, you know, parks and recreation, public health, uh, snow removal, garbage removal, hydro, uh, policing, all those things are very close to us and, and that, that municipal government's piece is very important. Okay. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on the sitting uh, uh, city council and how, what would you like to see changed in that city council? Well, first of all, it should start reflecting the diversity of the, when I say diversity, I say broadly, mm -hmm. not just in terms of ethnic diversity, but gender and so many other things that, that we have. Uh, it needs to reflect. Second, it needs to be grounded with the ground realities of the people. Um, just being in downtown city hall and not being connected to what the realities of the people are is a problem. City processes are away from people. Uh, when was the last time communities were involved in budget processes, social planning, urban planning? Uh, the consultation that take place uh, actually you know draw maybe five ten people in many cases mm -hmm. so the city government the municipal government is not accessible for people yet it's not inclusive of diversity despite it's, the fact that that is the closest government to the that's people. the closest yeah 